very difficult to say there's one single thing that made a difference because you could easily say oh the fat answer can be teamwork or you could say uh, it's about having enough capital to grow or one can say oh the secret sauce was uh, something else like for instance uh, it was possible you were in a sector where technology or technology platform helped you to scale, scale up but in my case it was none of that because all the business whether it's strategy consulting or uh, whether it is business to business market research which we are doing now in 105 countries or whether it is analytics or this text analytics which we are doing none of them was scalable in the conventional sense and many of these firms in the services business actually grow significantly by doing through m&a inorganic growth is what it is but we've been lucky to grow pretty decently and i say that with a certain amount of humility that we've been able to grow well uh, organically hmm. and um, some of the reasons i could attribute are um, we were highly competitive at every stage when i say competitive i don't mean cheaper i mean we are highly competitive <clears throat> so and it, we became competitive because we had a combination of excellent people and innovativeness so innovation and good people it go to very go hand in hand because if you have good people and you give them an opportunity to innovate make mistakes come up with a better idea then they really thrive and then you have bigger and bigger teams and the company grows and the clients also love it when you come up with a new way of looking at things so that has helped us all through today is my 51st year in, as a professional and uh, i can tell you that innovation really helped all through all through if there's a way someone is doing it the first question is as you to ask is can i do it in a different way better for instance my journey entrepreneurial journey started with business to business market research uh, and um, in those days the 800 pound gorilla in the business was tata economic consultancy services tecs which doesn't exist today it's different from tcs and it was led by a, a brilliant economist named Ezekiel Dr Ezekiel so there's nothing wrong with the kind of people they had there so and they had their model was uh, such that if we followed the same model we would have lost so we said let's turn the model upside down and see how we can create much more value for the client so they had a model where they had a few man- good managers at the top and a whole lot of backroom boys the boys being in boys and girls who collected data tabulated analyzed and in some cases even wrote reports and the senior managers would edit it or actually write the report and present it to the client and discuss have discussion with the client um that model is what i call a the model where the teeth to tail ratio is too big and too too small so the teeth only 5% 95% is body and tail to be fed we said let's do it the opposite we'll have 95% teeth and only 5% tail and body so we recruited only from the iits just to make sure that we'll and it took people who had an innovative mindset and who were also academically good so we created a team of these kind of people and said look we are not going to sit in the office and do analysis we're going to go in the field meet users understand the usage the market and so on so on walk the streets and wholesale markets and what not and then analyze write the report and you will be there to present along with the uh, the directors at the client meetings so at every client meeting if the junior most person who worked on the project was there and the questions when they were asked by uh, the clients these guys would give a, such a fantastic essence of what is really happening in the market and sometimes it is exactly opposite of what uh, people sitting in ivory towers imagined the market to be they got the information from the sales people and the sales mail got gave it to the sales manager and so on so on. by the time it reaches the top management is information which they think the management should know not necessarily everything so here was a completely different model and we charge double the fee of the top the leader and you might say it's stupid to charge double the fee of the leader especially when you're managing costs well so that created capital for us we made profit in the first month and by the end of the 6 months we had enough capital to grow further 
so it helped us and we were looking at not the price charged by a competitor or the biggest competitor but we were looking at the value being created and what is the value in relation to the benefit the client is or the risk the client is taking the client is putting him a 100 crore project how does it matter if it's, this cost is 0.2% instead of 0.1% of that cost so clients had no problem the problem was in the minds of the service providers so we said look we were charging double but we're going to give some amazing stuff and so we succeeded and this is the approach you have taken everywhere innovate innovate the business model and this can be applicable even inside the company but in one division another division where you're providing some services to the next division if you're able to innovate and come up with a better way of solving that other division department's problem suddenly you're in the limelight here you're on your way to become a cxo because they see that here's a person who who really does things differently and, and is so effective. He doesn't have to be told or she doesn't have to be told, do it this way. This is the way we do it in our company. We challenge them, say, this is not the way to do it because this was the way we should have done 15 years ago. Today, you should do it differently. And that will pave the path. I'm sorry, a long answer to your short question. No, no, wonderful. Thank you so much, Raj. 